I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I welcome you here to worship at Christ Church United Methodist here in Charleston, West Virginia. I'm Pastor Jay, the lead pastor here, and I'm really glad you've chosen to join us. If you have not already downloaded a bulletin, we invite you to do so. You can go to our website at uh, ccumwv.org, and you can download a copy of our bulletin and have all the liturgies and the words to all the songs and the things we'll be doing today. If you've noticed our advertising today, you've probably noticed that this was a Sunday when Pastor John, my, uh, our associate pastor of family life, we will be sharing the word today, but uh, he has some family illness and he's had to stay home today, so we invite you to, of course, remember him in prayer. It's not a a COVID-related illness or anything like that, but John's unable to join us today, and so those parts of the bulletin where he would be leading, we have others that will be uh, picking up that slack. Uh, But we are so glad that you've chosen to join us here on this uh, August 9th, the 10th Sunday in Pentecost, uh, in a day in which we celebrate the things that our church has been doing this week. Uh, with CCUM Unity Week. You can see some of those things behind me, and we'll be sharing more about them as our service progresses. But now, my sisters and brothers, I invite you to sit back wherever you are, perhaps grab your cup of coffee, your bulletin, whatever you're doing, and join us as we celebrate worship together. Good morning. My name is Karen Donathan, and I will be your liturgist this morning. Please join us in the call to worship from the Book of Uncommon Prayer. Jesus said to go into all the world. We will love like Jesus loved. Into the big cities and small towns. We will love like Jesus loved. The farms and the mountains. We will love like Jesus loved. The shelters and homes. We will love like Jesus loved. Jesus said, feed the hungry. We will love like Jesus loved. Shelter the homeless. We will love like Jesus loved. Heal the sick. We will love like Jesus loved. Visit the imprisoned. We will love like Jesus loved. And ask for nothing in return. We will love like Jesus loved. Expect nothing in return. We will love like Jesus loved. Love without expectation. We will love like Jesus loved. Love without strings attached. We will love like Jesus loved. It won't be easy. We will love like Jesus loved. Some people are hard to love. We will love like Jesus loved. It's hard to help those who won't help themselves. We will love like Jesus loved. He loved for no other reason than to love. We will love like Jesus loved. We will do the same. We will will love love like like Jesus Jesus loved. loved. Amen. Amen. And now, please join us in the hymn of praise called as partners in Christ's service.
because colleagues free and fair. So God grant us for tomorrow wings to order human life that surround each person's sorrow with a calm that conquers strife. Join me in the prayer of confession. Forgive them all, O Lord, our sins of omission and our sins of commissions, the sins of our youth and the sins of our riper years, the sins of our souls and the sins of our bodies, our secret and our more open sins, our sins of ignorance and surprise, and our more deliberate and presumptuous sins the sins we have done to please ourselves and the sins we have done to please others, and the sins we have forgotten, the sins we have known and remember, the sins we have striven to hide from others and the sins by which we have made others offend. Forgive them, O Lord. Forgive them all for his sake, who died for our sins and rose for our justification and now stands at the right hand to make intercession for us. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And now please greet each other and share in the peace of Christ by typing the peace of Christ be with you or other greeting in the comment section of the live stream. comes the time for our children's moment, so we invite all of you children and those young at heart to, to gather around your screen or your TV as we join together. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Pastor John can be with us today due to some illness, but uh, one thing we can do is try to say good morning loud enough that he can hear us wherever he is. So let's try to do that together with me, if you will. Ready? Good morning! Hope John heard that. Now, I was wondering, though, how many of you all know what this is? I know a lot of folks don't see them anymore because technology has changed, but, but this is a newspaper, and a newspaper is where I get my news because I'm kind of old school. I, I like my newspaper, and every morning, sometimes very early before I get up, there's a, a newspaper delivery man who comes and throws the paper, and it lands out in my driveway. And then when I get up before I have breakfast, I go out and I get this paper. I get my coffee and I sit down and I, and I look at the front page and there's always news there. I mean, some of it's good, some of it's sometimes not so good, but it always keeps me informed about what's going on. And then I often look inside and read the editorials where people give me their opinion about the things that are in the news. And then I go to the, the sports page and kind of read about my, my favorite team and how they're doing. 
You know, sometimes they win, sometimes they lose, but the paper always gives me an up-to-date thing about what's happening with those teams that I like. And then as I finish up, the last thing I read is the fun part, the comics. I always like to read the comics because they, they make me laugh and they help me start my day feeling good. And I'm so thankful for that delivery person who comes by and delivers the paper for me to get that good news every day. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm not even sure I know his name. Or whether it's a he, it might be a she. But what I do know is that person always comes to make sure that I get my, my good news. But you know, in a lesson, one of, in Paul's letter to the Romans, he talks about happy are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, I don't know for sure whether my newspaper delivery person has happy feet or not, but I do know that they bring me good news. But I was wondering about what might be other ways that we could share good news with people? Meaning, how could we share that good news about Jesus? How could we share that good news about love? Hmm. You know, one thing we could do is tell people that we love them. That's good news, right? So I encourage you to go tell the people you love that you love them. Another thing we can do if we're with our family and those close to us, we can give hugs. I know we can't give hugs to everybody today because we have this virus thing going on, but for those that we've been in our house with, we can. And so I encourage you to maybe give your mom or your dad or, or your sister or your brother a hug and let them know that you love them. But you know, sometimes we do things to show people our love even when they can't see us. It's true, kind of like that newspaper delivery person that throws the paper out on my uh, driveway every morning so I can hear the good news. Sometimes we, we give people things to show how much we love them and to share good news with them. If you look behind me, I think the camera can show it. Look at all of this stuff. There's book bags here, book bags that are full of school supplies, which will be really good news for some of the kids when they get ready to start school, particularly those kids that don't have anything and can't afford to get all the stuff they need. So that's one way we as a church are sharing good news with them. You also notice there's a lot of bags and there's some cans and we've got food, lots of food to give to the food pantries to show the good news for those people maybe who are struggling with not having enough to eat this year. So there's lots of things we can do to show good news. We can tell people we love them. We can share good news with our voices but we can also share good news with our actions by giving people the things they need. So my little friends out there, my prayer is during this week that you might think of some ways to share the good news with the people you love and maybe even good news to people that you don't see so often by writing them a card or, or a note. But somehow, some way this week, share the good news because people will be really glad to hear it. Let's pray with me, if you will. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you that we can be the people who bring good news. Help us to share your love with everyone we meet. Amen. All right. Thank you all. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to God praises all the earth. Oh, sing to the Lord and bless his name. Bear witness of God's grace, glad tidings of great love. Proclaim our salvation from day to day. Come tell of God's glorious mercies, show the peoples his wonderful works, for great is our Lord, he deserves our praise. He is feared from on high, other gods are but dust. 
For the Lord made the heaven strength and beauty lie in his sway. Skies be glad, the earth rejoice in the Lord, the sea sing out God's name. rise up in joy let the forest clap their hands the whole earth give thanks to the God we love worship the King come and worship the throne lift your hands lift your hearts lift your lives as an act of praise Chris and Andy, that was a beautiful song. You can't help but smile behind the mask when we hear that one. Our lesson today comes to us from the, the book of Romans. This is a text that John picked since he was leading the service today, uh, and so I've chosen to continue with it. Uh, it begins, it's chapter 10 in Romans, beginning with verse 5 and continuing on through verse 15. Paul's writing to a church he'd never even visited yet, and he shares these words. He says, Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and is so saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, as we gather in your house and in our own homes throughout our community and world, I pray as always that these words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts as we gather together would be acceptable in your sight, for you ever and always are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of you are on Zoom this week? I'm sure there's lots of hands going up. We, we use Zoom all the time for our work. We do many meetings through it, and Zoom is still the safest means to gather, especially if there are some whom we are wishing to gather who are at high risk due to age or illness. Zoom has kind of become part of what we've been calling our new normal, though I pray it's not the normal that will be with us from now on. But anyway, I was on several Zoom calls this week, and, and interestingly enough, two of them, we began talking about what it means to share faith. And on one particular call, we, we were talking about the word evangelical. And it's a word from our tradition, which in my lifetime has taken on a somewhat different meaning than perhaps it was originally intended. Indeed, in our modern world today, in some circles, the word evangelical has become a negative term 
due to specific political overtones. In other circles, it's become a badge of honor or a proclamation of a, of a specific identity. But regardless of its modern connotations in our culture today or its implied meaning, the word evangelical has its roots in this word evangel, the Greek euanglion, which at its core just simply means good news. You know, in those Christmas carols we sing, we talk of the angels on high and the evangel they bring, for they bring the good news of Jesus Christ. For we Christians, the good news is this gospel, this gospel of Jesus and his kingdom. You know, Paul speaks of this in our lesson today. Paul was writing to the Roman Christians whom he had not met yet. He was trying to convey unto them the basic truths of the gospel. And so at the end of our pericope, this section of scripture we've read today, he says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful are they who bring good news. Those who herald the good news of God. How beautiful are those who bring the evangel. How beautiful are the evangelists. Now, I also know in our contemporary world, and as I discussed with my friends about this thing called evangelism or evangelizing has sometimes taken on a negative connotation, and that's sad. Because you see, evangelism, this sharing of the good news, Paul reminds us, is a beautiful thing. And it's a beautiful thing because it literally changes lives. It changes people. And announcing good news usually involves a opening up a conversation about our Christian beliefs. Our words are important, for they're how we share our faith. Paul says, the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. For Paul, the, the word of faith does not require formal religious education or, or extensive theological vocabulary. I, I'm very glad that I had the privilege to go to seminary and to learn, but that's not what's required. He says, no, that on your lips and in your heart, this word is there, this word of faith. And the challenge is simply to express it. When we think about talking to someone about our faith, though, we often get stuck, don't we? We get stuck before the words even come out of our mouths. Usually it's because we don't want to lose a friendship. We go through this whole series of, of what ifs. What happens if I invite my friend to church and he says no? What, what if I, I make my friend feel awkward? What if someone thinks I'm pressuring them? What if I come across as judgmental? What if, what if, what if? So what happens is most of the time we don't talk to our unchurched friends about our faith. And then maybe we feel a little bit guilty about not doing it. But you know the thing is, guilt's a funny thing. It may make us feel bad, but it, it's not usually helpful in getting us motivated. And so these inner barriers, these things in our mind, cause us to even stop mentioning the faith to our friends. But the truth is, everyone has a faith story, one that will be of benefit to others if we tell it. For if we share our story authentically and truthfully, I think we will find that most people will see it in positive light. It's like the story of the lady from Fairfax, Virginia, who, who stood in front of a Presbyterian congregation one Sunday, and she said, I believe in God. Now, she admitted that that statement probably did not seem unusual or novel, particularly in that context of standing in front of the church. But she said, if you had known me before and then looked at me now, standing in front of you saying, I believe in God, you would wonder what happened to me. And the question is, what happened to her? And then she gave the answer. She says, you happened to me. All of you, as a part of this community of faith, you happened to me. And how did that happen? Well, I grew up in a home without faith. It just wasn't part of what we did. I was an atheist. I, I was kind and compassionate. I just didn't believe. It, it just didn't matter to me. But then she read a newspaper article about the church, and it pulled at her. She visited, and she wondered, are they really going to want me here? 
Are they really going to welcome an unbeliever, an atheist? And her answer was, well, you did. A church member met her that day and led her into the sanctuary and, and sat with her during that first service. She joined the, the new member visitors class and, and felt very much at home. She, she was baptized and the congregation promised to nurture her in faith. And then the members invited her to come involved in the church in significant ways. And so she said, so to say that I believe in God means I believe hope is stronger than despair. Pain will always be followed by healing. Within darkness there is light and death is never final. Do you hear that? To say I believe in God means I believe that hope is stronger than despair. That pain will always be followed by healing. Within darkness there is always light and that death is never final. My friends, I think that's good news, don't you? That's the good news that she learned. She learned the good news because of the grace of a church family who was willing to tell her. Each of us has a story. And the challenge to us is to share it. Whenever we speak of God who has been in work in our lives, we are putting on our faith and we're showing the world what we believe. For faith to work, it has to be visible. This requires a movement from our faith being on the inside to being on the outside. It has to move from our hearts to our mouths. For one believes with the heart and is justified, Paul says, And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. From the heart to the mouth. From the interior to the exterior. This movement is critically important. For the faith of our hearts is not fully formed until it emerges. And it becomes the faith for us to show the world. According to Paul, confessing with your lips that Jesus is Lord is a visible sign of your invisible belief. Your belief in this God, this God who who brings hope and despair, this God who brings healing to pain, this God that brings light and darkness, this God who in Christ Jesus has conquered death. Paul understood this fact. And as a matter of fact, Jesus in his teachings tells us this too. He, He reminds us that our faith is not a private matter. Remember, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And in Matthew, he says, no one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket. Our light is meant to shine. And our faith needs to be spoken and shared authentically as the good news that it is. And when we do, it shines brightly like a lamp giving light to the entire world. So when our feet are involved in the mission of bringing good news to people, Jew and Greek, rich and poor, male and female, they become beautiful feet, as Paul tells us. You know, I once heard the story of a church that had a a vacation Bible school, and they did it outside. They built a a New Testament-style village. They had a marketplace and a a street scene, and the adults dressed up uh, uh, and portrayed the characters of the gospel as they milled around the city. They even had someone as Jesus. And the kids loved it, especially little Elizabeth. But after Bible school was over for the day, Elizabeth was at home, and she she fell, and she scratched her leg. And she showed it to her mom, and her mom gave it the required kiss and and touch of a mother. But it wasn't enough, and so she put boo-boo cream on it and even a a Door of the Explorer Band-Aid. But it still wasn't enough. The little girl said, i got to show it to Jesus. He can make it better. And she insisted, and so the mom tried to explain, well, Jesus isn't really over at the church. It, it was just vacation Bible school. It was, it was a man in costume, but that just made it worse. The little girl said, no, he does too, she cried. And so it lost. The mom finally piled Elizabeth and the other kids in the car, and she drove over to the church. She assumed there'd be nobody there. But sure enough, there were people there taking down all the decorations from the marketplace, the vacation Bible school. And then sitting there on the steps was the man who played Jesus. He wasn't in costume. He was just in his street clothes. But the little girl didn't notice. She said, there he is. And she ran to him. And it was before COVID. So he reached out and he held her hand. And then she and her mom prayed for the little girl on her knee. And a smile came across her face. And she went home. 
his feet were happy because he shared good news. But you know, the thing is, sharing good news isn't just words. It's not just holding the hands of a little girl and praying for them. For our good news that we share needs to be acted out. You know, photographers and videographers are experts of of carefully framed portraits of starving children with with bloated bellies and dough-filled eyes. And we see those images on television and, and in magazines when they're broadcast before us, particularly those of us in the world's well-fed and first-world nations. To these photojournalists, comedian Sam Kinison, who died several years ago, asked a startling yet, yet obvious question. It was in one of his most famous routines. He says, how come the film crew just didn't give the kid a sandwich? And though his controversial humor hits home, it's good news. Because because if the good news doesn't change lives for the better, then what's good about it? And as St. Francis is reported to have said, we're supposed to share the gospel and if necessary, use words. You know, there's a lady who in a survey around evangelism was sharing kind of a new definition. She says she now thinks of evangelism as sharing something she enjoys with someone she likes. And for her, it takes away the fear that she is being overbearing. Sharing something you enjoy with someone you like kind of sounds like friendship, doesn't it? Just being a friend. And as a matter of fact, sharing something you thought might help someone in need, that can be evangelism too. Sharing something you know you need with someone else who needs it. Sharing something that, that makes someone smile with someone who could use a smile. Sharing something that gives you peace with someone who's in the midst of chaos. Sharing something you enjoy with someone you like. That's evangelism. And in these days of COVID-19, we have been struggling on how to be in ministry to our world. How do we share faith when our buildings are closed? How do we get, get close to people in times of social distance? Now, admittedly, we've used these means, these electronic means, and I'm so thankful that we have the way through the media to get worship and Bible studies out. We've done video vacation Bible school. We've done programs in new ways. We're getting the word out to people. But the thing is, this week, we were able to be evangelists. Be evangelists in the truest sense of the word. You all have been evangelists this week. Your feet have been beautiful because you have shared the good news in word and deed. We have come together at CCUM to celebrate CCUM Unity Week. We usually just do a Unity Day where we go out in the community and we do acts of service. But we had a community week, a community week of unity. And this week began with one of the hardest decisions I have ever had to make as your pastor. I, along with our relaunch team, we had to decide whether to have the twice-blessed consignment sale. In these days of, of closed buildings and care, we had to decide whether to open our building and to allow the community to come in. We put our heads together and we thought about it and thought about it and we came up with protocols that we believe kept it safe with, with masking and, and small groups of people being in the building for this event that usually raises money for mission. And it did, it did, it raised money for mission. It raised about, I think, three or $4,000, they tell me. But what was even more important, though, is the people who led that event told me that invariably the people who came would come to the register with tears, thanking them, thanking them that they could come and buy inexpensive clothing. These are people who, in preparing to clothe their kids for school, always came here because we would have this event and they could get what they needed. That's evangelism, sharing and giving people what they need. And then throughout the week, we we invited people to pray. 
to do prayer walks, to go walk in the community. Folks came and, and walked around our church community and prayed. They, they prayed for the people they saw. They prayed that God would open their eyes to, to the needs around them. I hope you did that at your neighborhood too. And if you haven't, that's okay. You can do it this week. Just go take a walk. Take a walk and pray that God will open your eyes to what are the needs around you. And then pray that he will show you how to respond to that. In addition to that, we, we know that school is getting ready to reopen. It's, it's weird this year, folks. We don't know when it's going to open for sure. We, we don't know if some folks are going to go in person or, or if some folks are going to go virtual or some are going to be homeschooled. We really don't know. And, and whatever decision the family makes will be the, the right decision for your family. But the thing is, no matter whether it's at home, it doesn't matter whether it's online, and it doesn't matter whether it's in person, when you go, you're going to need supplies. And so today, is through part of our Community Unity Week, we collected school supplies. We have 44 backpacks that are full of, of supplies for children that go to, to Piedmont Elementary or Mary C. Snow Elementary. And we know that those kids, no matter where they are instructed, they've got what they need. And that's evangelism. That's sharing good news. That, that's sharing Christ's love with people. In addition, we've got all this food. With food that we collected for the food pantries. You can see the bags here. You can maybe see the, the crate of peanut butter behind me. There's all this food. David tells me there's 400 pounds, and he's helped carry it to put it in here, so maybe it is 400 pounds, I don't know. But it's a lot of food, sisters and brothers. You did that. You were the happy feet, the beautiful feet of sharing good news by giving to your neighbor. That's how we do it. That's evangelism. Sharing love with others. Caring for our friends. Because each of these tiny acts of caring shows the love of Christ to others. You know, there's a Hasidic story about Rabbi Moshe Loeb who said, there is no property nor power in human beings which was created in vain. He says, even all the lower degenerate pro properties can be elevated to serve God. Like arrogance, when it is elevated, it turns into great pride in God's ways. But what may be the denial of God have been created for, it too can be elevated into helpful action. For if someone comes to you and asks you for help, it is not for you to receive them with a pious word saying, trust and cast your care and your need on God. No. For you it is to act that there were no God, but that the only one person in the world who can help that person, that being you. New Testament scholar Gerd Thyssen, who tells this story, recommends that every time we are confronted with a human need, we should remember what Rabbi Moshe Loeb said. He didn't say, God will help. He said, I will help. Or in Thyssen's word, why does God allow it to have this negativity around us? Why doesn't God put an end to human cruelty? We don't know. But the thing we do know is that perhaps God put us in this place so that you might represent his love to that one person. That you might present it just like Jesus. Not as a perfect human being, but, but as one who also suffers and is tried because you were thought worthy to represent God. You were thought worthy to represent the love of God in Christ Jesus. God has not left it for imaginary people to represent his love to his creatures and help them, but to real people, people like you, people like me, people who are dependent on being represented. God has irrevocably allied himself with people like us to bear witness to his love. And in the end, my friends, that is evangelism. Bearing witness to God's love. Evangelism is nothing more or nothing less than sharing that love. And as Paul says, beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. My friends, beautiful are your feet as you go forth to share good news. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. And now as we prepare for our time of prayer in our service today, uh, actually we got a response to the word. I got ahead of myself. I invite you to stand, sisters and brothers, and sing this song about how we are all one in mission, for indeed we are all one in this mission together, this mission of proclaiming and sharing the good news. And thank you, Annie, for leading us in that wonderful hymn. Sorry I got ahead of us a little bit. But now as we do gather to share our prayer concerns, as always, we invite those of you that are joining us through Facebook to put your prayer concern in the comments section. We will also invite you to send them, of course, into our office, and we'll send out our prayer list. You can do that by sending an email to office at ccumwv.org. You can call them in. Any way you can, we can get those prayer concerns out. We also invite you to pray for your community, as I shared in the midst of my sermon and in our work this week. We pray for Jonathan and others who are wrestling with illness this day. And we pray for those that have lost loved ones, as we know the, the Ward family is still in mourning as we lay down to rest this, this week. But now, my sisters and brothers, as we hear this song guiding us into prayer, with us center our hearts, center our minds, center our spirits in God's presence as we gather for prayer.
merciful Lord of power and grace. Listen to your children pray. Listen to our prayers, O oh God. For we come before you in the midst of great stress and struggle. This virus has gone on so long. We worry about school starting. We worry about how to to be with one another in love and in the midst of this divided nation and world. But Lord, you've promised us that you do listen. You not only listen, you hear and respond to our prayers. You respond to our needs as we lift them before you. And so today, O oh God, we lift all of these concerns. We lift them to you and lay them at your feet, trusting in your power to show us the way through them. For we know that sometimes prayer is not just saying it. It's following your lead and responding. We give thanks that this week we have been able to respond as a community of faith, hope, and love. That we truly have served as your hands as we have collected all of these school supplies and the food to, to share your love with our neighbors. And so today, oh God, we pray your blessing upon them. We pray for every child who will receive a backpack, that as they open the pack and they get out the paper and the pencil and the, and the pens, that they will know that this isn't just school supplies, but that it is us saying we love you and that God loves you. And they might feel that as they begin their school year, be it at home online or homeschooled or in person, wherever they are, they will know that you love them. We pray, oh God, your blessing upon this food. We know during these days there are so many who have lost their jobs, those whose funding has ended for their unemployment. And, and we pray that as they receive this food and as they nourish their family with it, they would know that it's not just food. It's love. It's our love for them and your love for them being expressed in concrete ways. And, oh God, we pray for all of those who need you today, those who are ill, those that are fighting the virus, those who are wrestling with other ailments, and we, and we pray for your healing power to be upon them, bringing strength. And where, where we can be of assistance in bringing that healing, we, we pray that you would show us the way. We pray for those who mourn and have lost loved ones, and we pray that, that we might be conduits of your comfort and grace to these families, that even though we may not be able to hug, that they may know that they are loved. And we pray for this world that's divided into, into its various camps and divided in so many ways. We pray that through this word of grace that you've entrusted to us, that we might proclaim the good news, the good news of love which overcomes the barriers that we've created. And through our act of witness to that love, healing and reconciliation might come, coming in our families, in our communities, and in our world. For God, you have called us to be those who proclaim the good news those whose feet are beautiful because of the news they carry. Help us to carry that news inside and without so that all the world might know you and know your love. And we ask it in the name of Jesus, this one whose good news we proclaim and that one who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, sisters and brothers, as we prepare for our time of offering, we invite you to notice on the screen those ways in which you can share monetary gifts with us. We've been collecting special gifts for our assistance ministry all week, and if you'd like to send in a, a gift for that, we invite you to do so. Just mark it assistance ministry. Those funds are used to, to meet the needs of those who are wrestling with housing or utility issues. We are in ministry and sharing good news in many ways, even though we're not all here together. So we invite you to take this opportunity to do so. So now let us offer our gifts and ourselves.
creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise Jesus, Lord, as our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power bliss. Praise the And now, my sisters and brothers, as we go forth into the world, may you be a people of beautiful feet, those who bring the good news of Christ's love to all whom you meet. Go forth trusting in his grace, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.